are you? I hope you're good. So, was Molly Weasley a terrible mother? Is the Ministry of Magic a dictatorship? I'm gonna be answering those questions and more in this video. Some important questions that we might have pondered about about the wizarding world. So yes, today we have another Harry Potter themed video. I love it. I love Harry Potter. And I'm really, really excited about this video because it's gonna be really kind of fun and unique, I think. Now, as you know, I hardly ever do brand deals on YouTube, but I was really, really excited to team up and be sponsored by this new app called Euron. The past week or so I have been asking Harry Potter questions on this app and they're just 15 second videos and you can reply with your own 15 second video to my questions on there and I've been getting some really really cool responses to them and I'm really excited to show you some of those responses in this video today. You are also free to join in with these questions on Euron too. Another reason that I'm really really excited to be talking talking about Euron is because we've decided together that for every response I get on these Harry Potter questions that I have on Euron, we are going to be donating £1 to the NHS. Euron are looking for around a thousand downloads and responses to my Harry Potter questions on there. I feel like it's a great way to raise money for the NHS and also just be huge Harry Potter nerds. And I'm really, really excited that we are doing this together. And the app is free, you just download it and you just answer my Harry Potter questions and that's it. You get to be a Harry Potter nerd, we get to chat and we're also donating to the NHS. It's fantastic, it's win-win. It's been really nice to actually see your faces as well. I think it's a really unique way of having a conversation. I haven't really seen an app like this. And obviously there's not just me on there either. There's loads of different topics, different conversations. There's even challenges that you can join. It's a lot of fun overall. So I'll put a link in my description below so you can check out the app. And like I said, join in, be a Harry Potter nerd help out the NHS, yeah! Also, another reason I am really excited, okay, I probably shouldn't do that with this one. Another reason I'm excited is we're gonna be giving a prize for my favorite response as well. I am gonna be picking my favorite response to my Harry Potter questions on Euron and you will win a prize. And the prize is gonna be an Etsy gift card. I picked this prize out and the reason that I picked an Etsy gift card is because there are so many cool, unique, handmade Harry Potter items that you can get on Etsy along with obviously loads of other cool handmade stuff on there. I really wanted to support small businesses and artists and creative people in this time. So not only by downloading this app and responding to my Harry Potter questions are you helping to donate to the NHS, one person will also be helping out some random artist creative person out there and I really really appreciate that I really really love that me and Euron are doing this together but anyway let's get on to this video so yeah I'm gonna show you some of the questions that I asked on Euron along with some of the responses on there and I'm gonna answer some other ones on this video too and the first one that I asked on Euron was should Harry have died no I don't think he, he should have died because he's the boy who lived and it, on, it only makes sense that he stays alive. But I think Draco should have gotten like a redemption arc. And it, J.K. Rowling had the perfect time. Harry should have died and Draco should have been the one to kill Lord Voldemort. I think the message of redemption would have been so strong, especially as he lacked the guts to kill Dumbledore before. The power and the honor of acting for a moral good would therefore be stronger than the power of Voldemort's orders and manipulation. I think Harry shouldn't have died, I mean, it was awful that he did, like, everyone liked Harry and he already had such a tough story, like losing so many family members and all that, and it just sort of, it just had such a horrible ending. Absolutely, he should have died. All this duality and all this talk about how one cannot live without the other, that was the way to go. They kept it happy ending for the money. I actually think from a marketing perspective, no, he shouldn't have died because you can't carry on the franchise because child. Um, it is kind of fun to imagine what it would have been like if he died. Is that really sadistic? Like fun to imagine if he died? But if Harry had actually died, but Voldemort came back, or should Voldemort and Harry have died together at that point in the forest? But if Harry just died and then Voldemort came back, then who would defeat him? Okay, so the next question I have is, do you think Hermione would have been happier with Victor Crumb? I don't know. I've never really felt comfortable with their teenage romances. I feel like 
it's kind of strange. I know that they went through traumatic experiences together and there's not really anybody else that could understand those traumatic experiences that they had. I don't know, I feel like with some relationships that helps but in other relationships it can be really bad and realistically like not everyone would end up with their high school romance. So Hermione ended up with Ron. I'm still on the fence about. I like Ron. I think he's great. He has his flaws like every other character in Harry Potter and every other person in real life. But I do think that they're actually quite a nice match. I think Hermione is a very powerful witch. She's very smart obviously. She does her own thing. She's very confident in who she is. I don't think she needs to lean on anyone. I think she just needs to feel comfort and to be loved and I think Ron does provide that to her. Her being happier with Victor Crumb, I don't know if she would be happier. I feel like it would be quite stressful for her to be dating a famous Quidditch player. She already has famous friends and then dating a famous Quidditch player as well. I feel like when you're in that kind of position you just want to have some sort of normality in your life and even though Ron ends up being a war hero, I feel like the Weasleys have that kind of down-to-earth reality kind of vibe to them still and I think Hermione needs that so I don't think she would have been happier with him. They also didn't really have engaging conversations or that kind of, there was like that flirty kind of passion. That was about it, there wasn't really, we did, there was not, there's not enough information in the books or any development of their relationship for me to really judge that question. So yeah, for me, that's my opinion. What is yours? Okay, so the next question, which I also asked on Euron and I'm gonna show some responses to, is a really interesting one. And I hadn't really thought about this before until I came up with this question. And it is, is the Ministry of Magic a dictatorship? It is definitely a dictatorship. No one treats my serious like that. I'm not having it. Bad. Yeah. And there are like human rights violations left, right and centre. Um, like the conditions in Azkaban, mental and physical torture, horrible conditions, unacceptable. On a good note. Okay, I don't know about it being a dictatorship, but you cannot tell me the government is not totalitarian because totalitarian, that thing. That's another. I mean, I think it absolutely is. It's. It's a totalitarian government. I mean, like, with the paper and stuff, there must be some state censorship going on. Oh. That's actually such a valid point. It reminds me so much of um, Spain under the ruling of Francisco Franco, um, especially your point of the Daily Prophet, because that's the only newspaper, and during Franco's reign, all the news was censored. Um, yeah, I guess... I guess it is. Yeah. Everything is going through in my brain right now. I don't feel like I hear this question enough, so it was really interesting to see your guys' responses. And don't forget, you can still download the app and join in with these conversations. And like I said, I will pick out my favourite response, you'll get an Etsy gift card. Okay, so this question, I've seen floating around the internet and I was shocked when I saw this question. And it's... Is Molly Weasley a terrible mother? We really do think of everything in the Harry Potter fandom, don't we? We really do try and explore every avenue. I think she is a very, very loving person. I think she has a very genuine heart. All she wants to do is provide the best for everyone and I think it is a pure soul. I don't think that anything she does is from like a bad place. I think she can be a bit of an overbearing mother. Like the clock that she has and just checking up on the family all the time. I think that can be a bit overbearing and she can be very much of a warrior which can be very stressful when you're a teenager as well. I guess I can see how it could be stressful for the Weasleys. I noticed that Bill and Charlie and Percy kind of got out of there as soon as they could out of the burrow and also Fred and George wanting to um, become more and leave and have their own shop and everything as well. Maybe the maybe people are asking these questions because she's like telling Fred and George not to go for their dreams and stuff. Um, yeah that is kind of bad. She needs. To, I feel like sometimes she can have a bit of a closed mind or her worries about what could happen overtake her open-mindedness mindedness 
or perceptiveness of how clever or how brave or how capable her children and Harry are, but yeah. Again, I don't think it's coming from any bad intention. And one good thing I think about Molly Weasley is that she never intentionally put her kids in danger. Like some parental figures in Harry Potter. Yes, we're talking about Dumbledore. Let's chat. Was Dumbledore a hero or a villain? Dumbledore is an amazing character, amazingly written character, I think. And I don't think he was either a hero or a villain. I think he was a guy that was a very powerful wizard, but he was just in over his head. He didn't know how to cope with it. He was given responsibilities that he shouldn't have been given. I think he managed everything badly. He has a shady past. And if he knew how to stop Grindelwald and he was responsible for multiple deaths, maybe hundreds of deaths, all because he was too cowardly to face him. Uh... That shady puts teenagers in danger all the time. The Chamber of Secrets, children getting harmed, and he's just like, should we close the school? I don't, should, I don't know. But Hogwarts is my home. Also the whole Harry situation, he just handled badly. And don't get me started on the whole fifth year situation. He did not have to avoid Harry that much. He was just never available to Harry. He was one of the reasons that Harry made stupid mistakes because he was just not there and he was just too cowardly. He was a coward. Dumbledore is a coward. He's not a hero, he's a coward. Dumbledore's a coward. He is. Too scared to tell Harry what's going on. Too scared to face Harry. Too scared to face Grindelwald. Shows up last minute at the Ministry of Magic in the Order of the Phoenix. He lets his greed take over when he takes the ring, Horcrux. He plays people like a chess game, like Snape and Harry for the greater good. Like he says that he is over the whole greater good situation after Grindelwald, but he really wasn't over the whole greater good situation. Like, come on. At the same time, I don't think he was truly a villain. I just don't think he should have given himself those responsibilities. I think he was just an arrogant guy who thought I am powerful, I am going to try and sort this out myself and just made terrible decisions and there was children involved and people died. But I don't think he's a hero or a villain, I just think he was a coward. Again, let me know what you think on this topic. Harry. No, no. Harry. No. And so the last question that I have in this video, um, which is also a Euron question again. This is very topical for me as a queer person who likes Harry Potter because I feel like there's a lot of conversation in the queer community about Harry Potter and what it lacks, what it has, the author. I already made a whole video on the author. Everyone, here is my question for today. Is Harry Potter queer baiting? Queer baiting usually means that they say that some characters are queer but never show the queerness or they hint at ca queerness in characters but then it never really develops so you're led to believe that characters are queer when they're not. I personally think that there is a little bit of queer baiting in there. Um, like Dumbledore is queer and J.K. Rowling did say that but like it's not really shown a lot but you know kind of... Uh, so I definitely think that Harry Potter as a series is queer baiting to some extent. However, because of the magnitude of the fandom, I believe that we have given a completely different and new meaning to the text beyond the author's intent, you know, with her head canons and fanfics and cosplays and stuff. And I believe that's just amazing. I love J.K. Rowling so much and I love Harry Potter, but it is such blatant queer baiting. It's kind of sad. I'm 100% convinced that um, Harry Potter is indeed queer baiting. I think that what they wanted to do is attract a larger audience, including the LGBT community, in order to make more money without offending the more conservative audience. I think J.K. Rowling took so much time to tell us that uh, all of these characters were queer that it can't really be part of the, the plan from the start. Having said that, I think it's fair to say that Dobby is asexual. I definitely think so, because she made all these revelations well after the books were published. And uh, moreover, she's got links to being a tough, which wouldn't make her the biggest LGBT supporter. Definitely say so, with Sirius especially. It's, it's too obvious. Personally, I think yes too. Drawing in queer and diverse communities by saying this character was diverse, this character was queer, when it was never really shown. Showing it just normalises it. And it is normal. Anyway, that could be a whole separate video topic. I absolutely love the response. Dobby is asexual. I do love that they brought in the asexual community into the conversation too. 
Omega. Woo woo. But I would absolutely love to hear your guys' opinion on this question and also the other Euron topics as well. Like I said, you can still download the app and join in the conversations and I will also be there on the app too, joining in and responding. I'm really, really excited. The link will be in the description below. Every response, we will be giving one pound to the NHS and I will also be picking out my favourite response and giving you an Etsy gift card. I'm really, really excited to see some of you guys on there and I love that it has this kind of like community aspect to it. I feel like I'm in the Harry Potter community but I don't really see you guys face to face. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more from me you can see my other YouTube channel here too. I don't know if I'll do one where I where am I going. I'm really looking forward to seeing the conversations to these questions. Bye!